Hello there, this is Rupesh and you are watching CPNet's video series on C++ and in this video we will be learning about what is this constructors in C++. Ok, so we will note down few points about these constructors here which will make sense when we will start programming. So first point is constructor is a function and its name is similar with its class name. Ok, so whatever the class name would be this constructor's name would be the similar name ok and the second point is they get called automatically when you create any object of that class ok so get automatically get automatic call when we create an objects of the class ok third point is it doesn't have any return type so generally if you are writing some function we type return also right like if you are writing like void and print and you are printing something like c out hello like this you write this return type like void or integer or something if you are not returning anything you will be writing void here ok so this constructor which is a function does not have any return type ok so that is another point here so no return type ok and fourth point is if we do not specify any constructor in our class, your compiler will do that. Ok. So your compiler will internally specify the constructor for that class. So if not given by user, compiler will create itself. Ok. So these are few points we should always keep in your mind when you are dealing with the constructors. Ok. So let's look at the code to understand this. Or yeah. Before going for the code here, let's talk about some requirements. So what we are going to code here. Okay. So let's suppose there is a requirement like you have this x axis and you have this y axis. Okay. And there are few points here like here and there like this. Okay. So this is one. This is one. So this point is like 1.5 and this is one. So x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1.5 or 2 let's keep it 5 here so you want to store this data ok so we'll create a class which will do this so let's look at the code now so as I told that we will be having some class and the name of that class we can keep it like point ok and we will be having x and y axis and they could be in point so we will keep it like double x and double y here. So what is this first point here that it is a function and its name is similar to the class name. So your constructor look like this. So this is exactly the same name as your class name here and yeah there is another point here. There are three types of constructors. First is default constructor. Okay. So in default constructor, second one is parameterized constructor and third one is copy constructor. So we'll see all these constructors here. Okay. So this one is going to be a default constructor. So default constructor will construct your object with the default values. Okay. Like this. So first let me write everything then you will understand it a little better. I know you are confused what are all these things. So let's create this object here then we will understand it a little better. So let's create the object of this point. So we will create a P1 here and another one would be P2 with some values like 1.3,3.4 ok and we will create a point p3 in that we will copy this p1 ok so these three objects are nothing but the demonstration for all these constructors here ok so if this p1 is getting created because whenever you create an object the constructors are being called ok so if you are creating object like this without passing any parameters like this then in that case this default constructor would call here Okay, and if you are creating object like this and passing some 
values. So in that case, your parameterized constructor would be called here. Okay, because you are sending the values here. So it will automatically check whether we have this kind of constructors. Yes, we have this constructor. Then it will call this type of constructors. And this is a copy constructor here. So it copies one object inside another object. That's why we are passing this point type only. Okay. Here we are passing 1.3. That's why we are keeping like double here, which is this 1.3 type. And if we are passing this P1, which is of this point type, that's why we are getting it as point. Okay. And we are keeping it constant just because we should not accidentally change what we are passing here. Okay. So we'll talk about this constant later. For now, you just think like if you are passing this RHS here, which is this P1, then you should pass it as constant. Okay. So this is what constructor does. Okay. So before going for the compilation, I should make this as public here so that it will be called because we know that if something is private, you cannot call that outside your class. Okay. So this construction of the objects are resulting into calling into this functions. So these functions should be a public type. And why I'm calling these constructor as functions because they are functions, but they are spatial functions, which does not have any return type here. Notice this and their name is equal to the class name. Okay. So let's compile this and check the correctness. See it is compiling successfully. So there is no problem in this code. Okay. We are not printing anything. That's why nothing came into the console. So if you want to verify that, yes, P1 is calling this one and P2 is calling this one and P3 construction is calling this one. We can give some message here like C out default call and here we can give some message like parameterize. Okay. So I'm writing everything in one line, but don't worry that is allowed in, in C and C++. Okay. So let's run this again and you will see the messages. See first default is called. So you are creating this first. That's why this default call was printed first. Next is param parameterized. So this is parameterized and this is resulting into this copy constructor. Okay. So let's quickly print what you are getting here. So I will make some getters here very quickly. So instead of printing all these things, we can print some meaningful stuff. Okay. So for P2, if you are getting X and P2 get Y here, and let's suppose you are printing that then you can visualize the results here. So let's go ahead and compile this. See the expected things are coming here. Okay. So let's talk about the use of this constructor. We use constructor because constructors are the first member function, which is being called when you create any object of your class. Okay. So you saw that as soon as this P1 is constructed, its constructor is called. Actually, that's why this is called constructor. Actually, it helps you to construct your object. Okay. So if you want to construct a default object, like without any value, you will have a default call. And inside that you can keep any default value. I'm keeping zero and zero. You can keep anything. Okay. And in case of parameterize construction, like you want to create this object, but it should hold some initial value. So you will pass those values. Okay. So in order to construct this type of object, there is something called parameterize constructor. Okay. So this parameterize constructor will be called and you are setting those values. Got it. This X capital X is assigned into small X and this capital Y is assigned into small Y. Okay. And in case of this copy, this copy constructor is being called. Okay. So what you are doing here, you are copying one property into another property. Okay. So it is not looking like this copy constructor is being called with this statement, but internally it called this copy constructor only. So you remember this. Okay. Whenever you create any object and simultaneously 
assign some another object in that in at that time copy constructor is being called okay and this right hand side object is going as a parameter here so this p1 is of type point that's why we are keeping it as point here okay and this reference is just because we don't want to create another object this rhs so we are keeping it as reference here which will indirectly point to this p1 only so if you have gone through the reference variable video in my playlist you will be very easily understand this that why we use reference okay so if you don't know let's keep it like this this p1 is coming here and this rhs is nothing but this p1 only okay just because of this reference here so this rhs is referring through this p1 only okay so we have rhs here which is nothing but this p1 so in that case p1 dot x will give you the x part of this p1 so you are initializing that x into this x which is this p3x so if you are not writing anything it becomes p3 okay as this x was becoming p2x okay and this x was becoming the x part of this p1 here in the same way this x will become part of this p3 okay so it is something like this you was calling this default constructor on this p1 so you was calling this parameterized constructor on this p2 and you are calling this copy constructor on p3 okay that's why you are getting these data members like this and in order to get the rhs data member you have to type it like this rhs dot x then only you can get the x part of this rhs okay so you will initialize that x part into x and y part into y okay so ultimately what you achieved you copied whatever was there in p1 into p2 sorry p3 okay so this was about constructors in c++ if you have any doubt please comment otherwise let's look at the next video and in next video we we'll learn about initializer list which is a new topic in c++ before it was not there in c++ it has introduced in new c++ and that is really very good topic so let's go ahead and learn that as well